Hello everyone, we're back with another RimPy uh, customization tutorial. We're going to further customize our UI in this video, and this time by doing the uh, menu choice screen. And uh, if you don't know what that is, I'll show you. You've probably used it before, but um, you might not know it by that name. But um, I've already got a starter project set up, and I'll just kind of uh, I'll just show you what I have done so far. So um, I've actually, I'm using the one that I used from the uh, mouse cursor customization tutorial. I've just simplified it a little bit, took out the mouse cursor and just like gave us a really simple uh, choice menu. So this is what it looks like when we start it up. Um, standard project screen, my uh, text box, my uh, comic <laughs> bubbles in the wrong place, but that's fine. We'll leave that for now. And uh, we have just these three choices to make. And again, this is the standard uh, choice screen and click one of those and then it exits. So really simple project. And I'm just gonna show you how to, how to quickly customize that um, choice screen um, to just kind of further refine and uh, the uh, look of your game. So we are going to be dealing primarily with uh, two files in this one. So we have GUI.RPY and screens.RPY. So before you go uh, editing things in these, I highly, highly recommend either uh, creating a backup of both of these files or um, or starting a new uh, project where you can kind of play with these and get your look and feel right. So it won't matter if you know if you mess something up and can't can't put it back to how it was. Like you can see on mine, I've got my YouTube tutorial uh, that I do these from. Then I've got one called Playground, and that's the one where I experiment and try new ideas. And if I screw something up, it doesn't matter. I can just you know uh, delete it and create a new one. So again, highly recommend doing one of those two things because you can mess stuff up pretty bad here, and uh, and I have before. Uh, so the first uh, file that we're going to deal with is screens.rpy and this one basically has all the different types of screens that we interact with. In my past tutorials I've shown you how to make custom screens um, but there are a lot of default screens that come with the game like the um, opening title screen uh, is a screen, the choice menu that we just used is a different screen and just like when you create your own screen you can edit these and do lots of different things to them. Um, so in this one, we're going to scroll down to the choice screen, which is right around like 200-ish. Yeah, on mine, it's exactly 200. This is the choice screen. And it says, yeah, this screen is used to display the in-game choices presented by the menu statement. So whenever you use that menu colon, this is the screen that uh, comes up. And I'm going to give you a very, very brief rundown of kind of uh, how this works. We're not going to go into a ton of detail. But basically, it's creating a screen. The screen is called choice. So whenever you do that menu statement, it automatically uh, calls this screen. And it accepts one argument, uh, which is a list of what it calls items. So whenever you use this, let me go back to my script screen. So when I use menu, uh, the menu statement, it calls that choice screen. And then everything down here, all of these individual choices, it automatically passes to that function as arguments. Um, that it can do different things with. And of course, you can change the behavior of this item by doing different things. Um, so it's got a style prefix, which we don't have to deal with that right now. Um, under that, it creates a V box, which is a vertical box. So a vertical box, if you can just imagine an invisible box on your screen that, um, that lists items um, vertically, so going down. So um, if I go back to my screen there, um, you can see like around here, just imagine a box and then it's listing items going vertically downward is how the, uh, is how the V box works. And I think we created our own V box in the um, um, inventory tutorial. It's been a while since I've done that one, but I think that we did the, uh, we did the same thing in that one. So if you've done that, you kind of have a good idea of what that is. Um, inside the V box, uh, we're using a standard uh, Python for loop. So we're saying for I in items, so basically it's iterating through all of those different item objects, which for us is just our different menu choices. And for each one of those, it's going to create a text button um, with the caption, which it also automatically gets from that menu statement. And it's going to create uh, an action. So it's gonna do something whenever you hit that. And the action is going to be whatever is in the body of those different choices. And right now I just got a pass statement, which it doesn't do anything. It just, uh, just keeps going with the script. Um, so again, if you have a little uh, experience with a vanilla uh, Python or with standard Python, you should um, have a pretty good idea of how that uh, for loop works. So under that, um, we set a series of styles. So right now it's saying that uh, choice vbox is vbox. So basically it's creating a vertical box called choice vbox. 
and it's going to inherit all the styles from the standard vertical box, which is um, elsewhere. I think that's defined in the GUI.RPY file. We're not going to mess with that one directly today. Um, we also have choice button, uh, and it's going to inherit from uh, the button object. And the buttons are just the individual uh, choices, like each one of these different things is a button. We are going to alter these styles a little bit in a couple of different ways. Um, so you will need to know that those, according to the game, um, those are um, considered buttons. All right, and then choice button text is button text, and that's just the text that appears inside the button, so pretty simple. Um, so under that, we're going to, and that's basically, again, just setting those three different styles. So under that is going to customize the styles of those um, different uh, uh, objects that, we, that are created up there. So the first one is the choice V box. So we're setting an X align of 0 0.5. And if you remember how the coordinates on the screen work, 0 0.5 is basically dead center. So along the X axis, the horizontal axis, it's gonna put it dead center. So right in the middle of the screen along the horizontal axis. Um, the Y position is 405. So that means that it's going to place it 405 pixels from the top of the screen. That's where that box is, uh, uh, is going to begin. Um, or I'm sorry, is that from the bottom of the screen? I think it's from the top of the screen. I forget how that works. We'll experiment with it a little bit in a moment. Uh, y anchor, um, it escapes me at the moment exactly what that one does, but we are not going to mess with it at the moment anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. And then it's setting spacing, and that is GUI.choice spacing. And we are going to uh, mess with the GUI object in a moment, um, but we're going to leave that one alone for right now. Uh, then it sets the style of the choice button to default, and then it's going to override the button properties. And again, we're going to play with these in just a moment in the uh, GUI.RPY file. Um, and that's basically all that we need to know about that for right now before we start customizing things. So um, usually when I customize things, I just like to go in and play with values and just see if I can make something do something. Um, so the, I'm going to show you a couple of different things that you can do, and then we're going to refine it a little bit. The first and probably most easiest thing to do is to change this from a vertical box to a horizontal box, so from a V box to an H box. And that is really, really simple. So up here, it says that the style of the choice V box is V box. So if we want to fix that or change that rather, all we have to do is change that V box to an H box. And what was my capsule key on? There we go. And then if I save that and go back to my game, it should automatically reload when I click on it. It didn't, so I'll manually reload. There we go. And now um, we have a VBox, but they are really, really wide. So we can only see basically one of them on the screen. That's choice two. Choice one is over on the left, but it's off screen. And then choice three is on the right way off screen. So uh, again, we did make a, make a change there, but uh, it's not exactly uh, working very, very well just yet. Um, I'm going to show you uh, one or two more things you can do real quick. I'm going to change the Y position from 405 to 750. And I'm changing that uh, to this specific value because I played with this earlier and that's just a value that I found that worked pretty well. But it's not going to work well just yet. But you can see it pushes that from 700 and, um, from uh, 400 and what was it, 405 pixels from the top. It's now 750 pixels from the top. And uh, I've got this set to a resolution of uh, 1920 by 1080. Um, so that kind of gives you an example, uh, an idea of like how far down it is. So 1,080 pixels, it's about, you know, seven tenths of the way down, give or take. Um, uh, so yeah, and uh, so those are our first couple of changes that we can make. Um, I'm going to make one other change real quick, and I'm going to change this uh, spacing. And I'm going to put a hard-coded value in here, which I don't normally like to do, but we'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to change it to one. And then when I go back, let me see, that may not have even changed anything yet. Oops, it's gonna reload. There we go. Uh, nope, you can't really see any changes yet. Um, you can a little bit, you can, I don't know if you can tell, but these boxes are a little bit closer together because now they're only one pixel apart and they were, uh, I don't remember what the default value is for the uh, GUI button spacing, but it's like uh, 5, 10, 15, something like that, I think. All right, but again, that's just some quick ways that you can customize that in the screens.rpy uh, file. But if we want to do a really big stuff, we're going to go into the GUI.rpy file. And for this one, we're going to scroll down to uh, about the same section. It's right around the 200s, I believe, is where it should be by default. So scroll down there. There we go. And we're going to play around with the choice buttons. 
So first thing we're going to deal with is the width, because right now um, these buttons are very wide because they're stacked on top of each other. They take up a pretty good portion of the screen. Again, I'm 1,000, uh, wait, uh, 1920, yeah, 1,920 pixels wide, and they take up 1,185 pixels of that. So that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good width there. Um, so let's change that to 500. So now it's going to make those buttons a lot narrower. Uh, this is one spot where you have to be a little bit careful because if you make them too narrow, the text uh, won't fit on there. But again, you can just kind of you know, play around with it and see whatever works uh, for your game. Uh, let's go back out and see how that looks then. There we go. So now you can see they are a lot narrower. That one automatically reloaded. So we can see all three choices on the screen. So already it's looking a whole lot better. Um, so something else that we can do with this is... Uh, there is this this one that says uh, GUI.ChoiceButton uh, Borders, and then it's got a borders function that it passes in. And if I highlight that, it lets us know um, what that uh, uh, borders function does. So it creates borders at the left, top, right, and bottom, and then padding for left, top, right, and bottom. Um, and again, you can change any of those values um, as you want. When I was testing this, I did change that to 50 instead of 150. I don't remember if that like did anything noticeable, but uh, let's check real quick and see if that does anything. And uh, I don't know. I can't really see any difference. Let me reload that. Eh, no, not really. Oh, well. Um, but I think that sets like a... Um, um, uh, makes them further away from each other. So it went from 150 pixels to 50 pixels. Actually, I can't really see, but I think they might be closer together. And uh, padding, I believe, um, sets the distance of the text uh, from the edge of the box. So let's uh, play with that real quick. I'm going to change that to an absurdly high value um, just so we can see what that does. So I'm going to change that pretty noticeable. Um, there we go. Yeah, so now you can see there's like lots of padding uh, between everything. And uh, I'm going to change that back to where it was. There we go. We'll leave that back at 8 for now. And I'll go ahead and leave the borders where they were. Couldn't see much of a difference there, but that'll work okay. All right. Um, so far, so good. Um, so there already you can do you know a couple of interesting customization options. Um, I'm going to... Uh, do one more thing with that. And this is going to involve directly manipulating the graphics. So right now, um, the buttons have this graphic where it's black and it has kind of a gradient, like a fade to transparent thing on the right. And um, I created my own graphic in uh, GIMP earlier. Uh, you can do it really easily with GIMP, Photoshop, you know, uh, Affinity, whatever, um, um, whatever drawing software or photo editing software that you like to use. Um, if anybody's interested, uh, let me know in the comments and I can do more tutorials on how to like create graphics and things. But um, unless there's interest in that, I'll like to stick mainly just to uh, code and to RenPy stuff. But again, you know, drop me a comment and I might look into doing that in the future. But it's really simple. All I did was I just took the graphic um, that exists by default. I imported it into uh, GIMP so it has the exact dimensions that I need. And then I just created a black one by just using the paint bucket tool, the fill tool, and just like filled it all in black so it doesn't have the gradient on the side. Again, not, not a, a super exciting graphic, but it gets the job done, though. Um, so the place that we find that graphic is in our GUI folder. So um, there's an easy way to get to it. Uh, if you pull up your RenPy launcher, just hit the GUI button under Open Directory. And that's going to open the correct folder. Um, so this has all of our UI graphics um, that we use throughout the game. And uh, since this is a button, we're going to go into the button folder. And the particular one that we are interested in right now is choice idle background. So this is a button because we're in the button folder. Um, it is a choice button and it is the idle background. So it's what it looks like when it's idle. It means we are not hovering over it and we're not selecting it. That's the graphic that's going to play. And uh, let me drop my um, other graphic in real quick. Uh, choice out of background. There we go. And again, uh, as with the files, I recommend creating a backup of these. So I'm going to rename that as exactly the same name, but I'm going to put uh, old at the end. So I know that's the old one. So now I'm getting an error message because it can't find that, which is fine because we're going to drop it back in. And I'm just going to take the other one that I had. I've got it in a different folder. Let's copy it over. There we go. Let's see if it automatically reloads. It does not. I'm just going to do Shift R to reload. And there we go. So now you can see our background buttons are different. They're now solid black. They don't have the gradient on the side. But when I highlight it, 
the gradient comes back because um, now it's doing the hover image, um, which if I go back in there, uh, we have a choice hover background, and that one is the blue button with the uh, the fade to transparent gradient on the side. So if you wanted to change that, you could go in there and you know do whatever you wanted to to that one, make it like a solid blue, kind of how it did with a solid black or whatever you like. Again, as with everything, just go in and play with these numbers, uh, create a backup of your original file, or use a different um, um, project that you don't you know care about messing with things. And uh, just see what you can do with these. Experiment with it, um, or just come up with something in your mind and see if you can do that in code to get whatever uh, whatever effect you want to do. Um, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you got something out of this video. And of course, any questions that you have or any other uh, topics you'd like to see me cover about anything UI customization or coding, RimPy, graphics, anything like that, drop those in the comments below as well. Um, as always, thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Goodbye.